so can we call to order Harris County Improvement District Number One Board of Directors meeting? Um, the first item is to approve the minutes from the February 27, 2019 Board of Directors meeting. Found tab one, page one. And I believe these were sent out before. So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next, we need to receive comments or questions from the public. Does anybody sign up or anybody? Okay. Any, any last minute volunteers? Hearing none, our next item is to review the quarterly investment report. Could you take us through that, please? Shannon, yes. tab two, page five. Yes, sir, thank you. The first uh, page of this two-page report. Hold on a second. Tab two, okay. Page five. Right. The reporting period is from January 2019 to March 31st. On this first page, we kind of outlined our balances in the general fund, of which we have 7.1 with Capital One, our primary depository, and just over 1 million with BBVA, our second series, for a total of 8.1 in our general fund. For capital funds, we have uh, just under 10 million with Capital One, and we have just over 4 million with Regions and Investment um, Accounts for the total of 14 million. And then debt service funds, our uh, balance is just under three million with Capital One. The second page kind of outlines the pledge collateral for those uh, direct deposits requiring collateralization. Our uh, deposits with BBVA Compass are secured with a letter of credit. And Capital One, our $19.9 million are secured with uh, pledge collateral to the tune of $20.9 million and they are uh, treasuries and agencies that are approved in our investment report. And lastly, our regions investments are approved investments and they're also short-term uh, treasuries and uh, agencies to the tune of 4.1 and they don't require collateral. The other thing on this sheet is to uh, show that we are in compliance with our uh, training. The investment officer requires training every two years. And so the next time Mr. Breeding is required to Are there questions or concerns? No question. The question is, I understand why the difference in rates between the more typical bank accounts and investment accounts. I understand that. But there's still a pretty big difference between the rates between Capital One and BBVA. Those are both required to be secured, right? Uh, are we on page five? Yes. Yes, ma'am. direct deposit checking account kind of uh, account and it has a low rate of return on that it's under one percent we talked to capital one bank and um, that is our going rate with that as well regions of course is investment so it's a little bit more in line with 2.4 with 2.41 that we're earning what we have done which will show up in the next report is that we solicited uh, three banks for better rates so we solicited Capital One, which they did not give better rates on like a CD to try and get more returns. So they didn't give us a regions, anything under 10 million, they didn't do CDs for. And so BBVA um, kind of had the better rates that are like 2.5 for a, a three month CD mm -hmm. and like 2.6 or 7 for a six month CD. So we moved funds out and we have those uh, empty CDs for, those, for that period of time. Shannon, so out of the seven million dollars, we're moving. We're moving just over one point, just one point five million dollars to get a better rate of return on some of our uh, reserve funds. And the reason why you haven't moved more than that out of the Capital One Bank fund? Well, we can move some more out of our Capital One, but we do have Regions, which we have a facility to move some funds over there. That nine point eight million is mostly the new uh, bond proceeds that we got. So we can move some more of that in, but I want to get a better rate of how we spend those funds down before I sign up. Yeah, it's just you're doing exactly what I would have asked you to do, which is. And we did meet with Capital One to kind of see, you know, could we get better than the 85.85%. Uh, and so they offered, um, you know, a different arrangement of our accounts to try and get a little bit of a return. But you know, we've gone so many years with making zero. 
that, exactly. that you know we have pretty significant balances and, and you know it, so yes I am let's, to get let's some continue to do that and if we need to look at other other banks that are well, equally qualified you know I have no idea what they're paying but and also, rates are all over the place rates are all over the place also I have been working with uh, with the, our some of our advisors and I'm preparing a banking RFP it is time awesome. to do a banking Sometimes they need to understand that that all things need to be equal before they get to keep the account or better. Exactly. So uh, we are it, it's real money now. And it's it nice to be in that position, but yes. not at all suggesting to take one bit of risk on this stuff. Uh, yeah, we are trying to be a little bit I more think more our objective would be uh, as she goes through that process to you know look at our projected cash needs, give ourselves a little bit of cushion there to try to ladder these out. Right. Uh, and get this to work a bit more than we yeah, have. Yeah, because if we're able to ladder it out, then we can make it work with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, starting with the shorter maturities and doing that. That should produce more a return. little better. It's nice if we have that opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? So that's just a report, no actions required. Okay, the next item is to review the list of directors to be appointed to the Harris County Improvement Number One Board. Tab two, page seven. John, you may want to take a seat. If, if, I, if I may, uh, I'm presenting on behalf of the, uh, the uh, nominating committee, uh, and uh, we are recommending. Uh, the reality is that uh, all the board member terms have uh, expired, and you have except to be, for two. except two yep. down here, yep. the, uh, Mr. Weld and Mr. Moose, uh, and so we are. Uh, Re recommending reappointment. If you see your name on the list under reappointments, um, I, you can interpret it, whether that's good or bad. But uh, we recommended uh, Mr. Gerald Crump for the Wine Garden, Todd Casper, CB, CB uh, Richard Ellis, uh, Steve Leonard, uh, Redstone. Can you get the right name of the company eventually? Uh, it's, I, uh, please, would you just. Yeah. Would you I've just, done this before, you know. Yeah, I, would you? <laughs> yes. Wait. Here, give me, no, you're gonna give me a card? <laughs> He's been waiting to give one. Is it? Of course it's wrong. It's CBRE, not Richard Ellis. Richard Ellis got lost a long time ago in Europe somewhere. <laughs> we'll try to get better. And, and, uh, and on the website. Yes, yeah. please. So yes. we want the public information to be correct, although it doesn't mean I'm going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we spell your names correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. So we're we're work on, and I appreciate you pointing those out. Uh, so and Jonathan Zadek, Tom Collard, and uh, Mr. Ed Wolf. And so, uh, and then we're uh, asking for your permission uh, to and the board's approval on appointments for four additional board members. These will actually have to go to the. TCEQ in Austin who reviews our appointments and, and confirms them. Uh, and in those positions are uh, Jeff Bowden with Hanover, uh, Mr. Aker, who's with the uh, Tanglewood Corporation, and Eric, Eric Sobeck with, this is basically the representatives for Four, Le uh, Four Oaks. And then, uh, I don't know if you know her, but uh, Jordy Giles' wife, uh, Sonny Masai Giles, uh, has uh, agreed uh, to serve. Uh, the UDA would like to recommend her as representing that organization, who is a property owner and needs to test uh, in this area. And it brings a little bit different perspective and uh, yep, uh, to the board. And so if I could, uh, I believe the next page is a resolution. Which page is that, everyone? Um, yeah, the, re the resolution is the document that we 12. send up to TCEQ, and that's the actual document that and, needs to be and it, and it may take four, three to six months to get these. 
actually make all of that, that That's right. The reappointments continue to serve via holding over in office, but the new appointments, because they're not filling out an unexpired term, are not qualified to serve until they're approved by TCEQ. So the people that are uh, being replaced, um, Strake is replacing Kendall's position, uh, and I, I have that list, but not in front of me. Those people could continue to serve until the new appointments confirmed. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if if I could have on page 12, uh, if we could have that uh, resolution uh, approved. If you want to look at the Can we have a motion? the action item for 13. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, okay. The resolution is approved. So that takes us on to the next All items. All right, officers. And I believe that's page 14. Yeah. Uh, current uh, positions, uh, our chairman of the board uh, is Mr. Kendall Miller. Our vice chairman is Steve Lerner. And our secretary is Mr. John News. Um, I will let you know that um, that Mr. Lerner had been uh, recommended and the city is working through their process. Mr. Lerner would uh, go to the uh, TERS board as chairman. And since he is chairman there, he can continue, he would, he would serve also in the district, so, uh, but uh, probably not as vice chair. And a recommendation of the uh, Nominating committee was that Mr. Wolf uh, would be named our new chairman. Uh, Mr. Crump would serve as our vice chairman, and Mr. Zadek would serve as uh, our secretary. And before, uh, if, if before someone says no, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move. I would <laughs> staff recommends. Motion carries. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Is there a motion? So is there a second? Second. All those in favor? All right. Okay. Motion carries. Congratulations. There's an extended training session that we will work with you on. All right. The next item, if we can get away with it, is to consider authorizing the 2018-19 uh, audit found on page 15. Okay. okay, yes, we'd like to get authorization to uh, engage with the can for our FY19 audit. Um, the fee for this engagement is $21,000, which is the same fee that we paid last year. Um, I reached out to a few of my counterpoints in other districts. Uh, downtown district, their audit cost $29,000 uh, a year. And the West Chase district, they pay but uh, included in our 21,000 is about 5,000 for a single audit because the district receives a lot of money in grants. They're required to do a single audit with the federal compliance. And so apples to apples, it would be about 16,000 without our federal audit piece. And I think that uh, that is comparable to what other people are paying. And again, like the uh, RFP for um, depository services and banking, we're also preparing to go out the district to enter into a letter agreement with Whitley Penn for the performance of the 2017-18 audit. Is that 18-19? We put these in there to, just to see if you guys want to check something. 20. Sorry, the script is 18, off. 19. My apologies. 18-19. So is there a motion now that we've got the right year? Motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Motion carries. 
The next item is to adopt a resolution adopting an operating and debt service budget for the 2019-20 fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Uh, tab uh, F3, and uh, as we begin to get in this, have fairly long pieces, some of which I'm gonna be, uh, maybe help our focus by using our, our, our slides here. Uh, if I could, uh, the way we structure this, uh, Basically, go over our, uh, our our achievements or some notable things that happened for the year. Uh, we'll then look at a summary of the budget, um, and then uh, answer some questions you might have. Uh, Amy, in my packet, I do not have explanation. Uh, it's probably maybe on the slide. We'll go from there. I'll try that. All right. Uh, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Uh, I think uh, as, as uh, Robert was preparing to leave for vacation and he was asked for his list of achievements for the year, uh, he said, look out the window. So although <laughs> that wasn't well received by the rest of us, I, I, I think it kind of points to the fact that most of our achievements are things that you see out on the street. Uh, just quickly, uh, it, it was terribly important at the time, completed all the traffic lanes in, 20, in Christmas of uh, 2018. Uh, we've uh, completed all the utility improvements, a lot of things underground that you don't see. Uh, began the installation of pedestrian lighting, uh, sidewalk paving, street trees, obviously a lot of changes this last year. Uh, our stainless steel signal poles are being reinstalled. Uh, and if you drive down the boulevard slowly and look to your median, you will see we are now beginning to landscape uh, the median, and we're excited about that. I will uh, I have a photo here a little bit later that uh, if you're standing on the platform for the, for the, for the bus rapid transit, uh, you will look out to the median and see roses growing. So it's transit in uptown is a little bit different than perhaps everything else. So, uh, we are, it will be installing between Westheimer and San Felipe. This week's rain hasn't helped, but we will be installing flowers probably uh, next week. Uh, they are ready to go Monday morning and if we can get finished and this rain will uh, lighten up. And I hope you also will notice that we've installed 10 of the 18 stations along the corridor. Uh, the West Loop bus lanes uh, running from uh, just north of Memorial down to Postal Boulevard. It's being built by TxDOT. Uh, the the uh, TERS uh, actually committed $20 million for that, and, and I present this uh, TERS expenditure, but it's something that the, your staff here is managing. Uh, TxDOT has also has completed the, uh, uh, the T-ramp uh, connector into the transit center, uh, and uh, our federal grant that this organization received is paying for those improvements. Our uh, transit center, uh, again, which this organization received the grant for, is under construction, making headway, and I've got some pictures here in a little bit to talk about that. And then we've uh, committed, uh, com completed the Eastern Everglades, the Eastern Glade, excuse me, phase one roadway and tri uh, trail and landscaping, and uh, the, the, the design of the Memorial Park land bridge schematic design and budget uh, have been completed and then finalizing the scope for final design and we hope to by uh, sometime in September have a, uh, a very good cost estimate uh, for that project as we go forward. Uh, more, uh, it was a big year for financing. The district itself sold uh, $10 million in bonds to the Uptown Development Authority as providing the local shares of projects that we're helping fund with federal grants. So about $55 million of bonds and TERS. Capital budget last year was $82 million. Uh, completed successful audit. Uh, we, are, we are down to just two parcels of property that have been acquired, and it is good to know that all of the property has been acquired uh, within the budget that was established by the city and by the, uh, by the TERS board as part of the joint funding project with this district in the TERS. What are the two parcels? What are the two parcels? The two pieces that are remaining are the lofts here uh, and the uh, property at the Hilton, uh, and, uh, and then the other 
parcel would be in Inverness? Uh, would be that yeah, Inverness is. Um, we have it. We yeah, we have a deal with them. We just it's not completed because we've been doing a bunch of curative work, some of which is on, on their property, and we're just now um, you know getting that deal wrapped up. But there's no there's no dispute there. Yeah. Is that twenty six and twenty on the map? I you know I have to go over and look, but Inverness would be there at Uptown Park Boulevard. Number one. Oh, number one. Yeah, that's number, number one. one. Yeah. Thank you. And then over here, it would be uh, essentially this property right in here. And the big problem is uh, we have, uh, it's a very complicated process. Condos are very difficult to uh, reach agreement with. There is, they can say no, but it's almost impossible for them to say yes. There's 300 parties. Uh, yeah, there's 300 parties. Right. But it, they have asked uh, for us to get back together and see if we can't work out a solution. I think they realize the project's probably going to get built. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, you know, I, I think we've done a, hopefully a good job of reaching out to the stakeholders, people in the corridor, keeping them informed as we've gone through this construction. And then finally, the maintenance and beautification. Uh, th these are kind of interesting points here. Uh, th it sounds fairly innocuous, uh, the Enhanced Freeway Trash Removal Program. It, have any of you taken the Southwest Freeway to downtown and the, and the Louisiana exit there? Can you see the encampments and things like that? One thing that we've learned is that you can't let things get started. And so we literally went uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, seven days a week, uh, making certain that we have removed any trash, signs of neglect uh, in the uh, the West Loop Corridor that has made a difference. We had the beginnings of problems, and uh, and so that was uh, something we got into, and actually it was something that wasn't necessarily budgeted at the time. Uh, we uh, installed our Holiday Star Program this last year. Uh, we uh, have, uh, I'm looking at our last one here, the holiday lighting, we've, we've done a lot of work here. Um, I don't know if any of you driven by First week of June, we actually had about 20 of our holiday trees up and operating testing systems. And, and the encouraging news is it all worked. Uh, and uh, so we are uh, we're we're, we're going to be prepared uh, for this uh, this fall. Uh, so there's uh, there's a bit of explaining to do about the budget, and we'll go over the details of this. Uh, Property owners, I assume citywide, and certainly within the uptown area, have been very effective at litigating their assessed value and having those values reduced. Uh, last year, just less than $500 uh, million dollars of value was reduced through litigation. Uh, it, uh, it, at one point, out of about $6.5 billion of property in this area, $404 billion of that property was in litigation. And so what I'm telling you that story is that we had historically anticipated some. Uh, we did not anticipate as much. And I think that we, uh, the settlements over, we had already, we anticipated some, it was two, over $200,000 of revenue more and so total uh, tax revenue was down about uh, 172,000. So we not only were down 172,000, but we had to pay back that 208. Shannon, is that a fair way of presenting that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and so that was uh, a bit uh, a bit of a hit on the revenue side. And then ex uh, expenditures exceeded the budget uh, by $700,000 uh, on a $7 million budget. And I'll hear of the areas where it really, in probably three of these major categories. Doing the arch lighting uh, last year was about a $350,000 uh, action that had not been budgeted, although the board was fully aware of what was happening. We, compared to every other major retail center, were extremely dark during the holidays. We felt like it was essential to do something to try to give the area uh, you know, a little bit of life. 
And so that, along with the electrical work here, there's about $150,000 worth of additional uh, maintenance along the uh, freeway that we recommend in our proposed budget that we continue that process. Um, a key thing I want to point out is that uh, over the last five years, we have added over $3.1 million into reserves uh, for the budget. The budget we'll pr present here uh, in just a moment is going to be a balanced budget. Our revenues are going to be about flat, uh, and it is a budget that we uh, can show you is sustainable. So, uh, I, I, the key point here is to tell you that we did overspend what we had been approved in our budget, uh, but it was a one-time effort to try to get us through the construction during the holidays without any decorations, et cetera and uh, we can go forward with our full program within the existing resources that we have in existing tax rates. Uh, it's not something you want to present to the board of directors, but I think, it's, uh, I think you can see where the money's went for what we're trying to achieve here. Yes, sir. The 3.1 million of reserve, is that prior to, is it about a $1 million net? Uh, yes. Less revenue and more expense. Is it 3.1? Prior to that, so now you only have the two million of reserves that have been built up. We have just within the last five years, we did three million. We have significantly more. Shannon, what if you look in there at the at the, the reserves uh, total dollar amount? Yeah, um, we have about four million dollars in reserves, and that yeah, that didn't necessarily knock knock it down. So uh, we, we can go over and, and in the budget detail here is the beginning of any cash reserves. We can see exactly what those numbers are. And uh, I think if uh, you go to turn over to Shannon, I want to I look at your number, make sure I'm looking at the right page. Um, beginning of any cash balance. Uh, on page 18. Page 18. For so, operating. So we started at 7.2. And are ending with 6.4. Uh, that, that's that's the official uh, ending cash balance that Shannon was pointing out. If you'll see below there, that our revenues, page 18, our revenues come in. Our fiscal year starts July 1. Our revenues start really coming in in January, February, and the last a little bit uh, comes in in March. And so we even looking at that, which kind of is our low point, uh, uh, it, it will have $4 million, but the reality is we have $6.4 million in reserve. Um, and so essentially a full year's operation. And uh, so I think we're sound. Be glad to answer any questions about this before we go forward. All right. Um, just so in terms of our capital budget, uh, we uh, had a beginning capital funds of uh, $10 million. Shannon, what page is that on? Yeah. So, the summary on that? Page 20, oh, 23. The uh, $10 million, we had sold bonds for another 10. We had grant, not grand proceeds, but grant proceeds. Uh, and uh, of 21 million, uh, our expenditures, <laughs> the, the big item here was $21 million then transferred out to the TERS uh, for the BRT project. Uh, other major pieces were for the pedestrian pylons, median lighting, holiday trees, uh, and then we're actually building uh, improvements on Post Oak Lane and finishing up uh, Hollyhurst. Um, our mobility? Yeah. yeah. And then finally, the remaining funds of $8.9 million uh, in our capital uh, for this coming year. All right. Uh, we could go over in a, a bit of detail, but this is showing up where the funds are and, and how we were down in terms of revenue. Uh, but primarily, it was in maintenance where the biggest uh, hit to the budget happened. Again, I think 
that was largely a one-time event. Um, questions about last year before we go into this year? If I may proceed, I'd be glad to go back if you have questions as we're sitting there we'll go through here. Looking at uh, uh, values, uh, you can see uh, we, we track this and we have information back into the 90s. Um, you can see what happens here at 07, 08. Uh, property values by uh, 12 are back up uh, above where they were at their heights. Uh, and then we had some really rapid growth and the 2010 through about 2016, 16 area. And then that's where litigation started happening. And you see how uh, that, that growth really tapered off. And actually, uh, it, it, we can look right here. We can see that our, our number, this is our number, uh, using the appraisal district's number, uh, but then beginning to discount it, is actually a slightly smaller uh, this coming year than in 2018 values. And, and <laughs> if you went to the appraisal district and looked, try to find what the certified was, uh, you get a, a higher number. But we have historically, uh, and, and particularly, this number right here has been influenced by the recent past history, the success of litigation, and reducing value. So we incorporate that. Um, and then we also, you'll see here in the budget here a little bit, actually now budget funds to pay back any settlements that happened in previous years. And so uh, we are projecting basically that values and revenue will be flat for this coming year. Uh, if we, based on that, and just looking at what kind of revenue that we would have, uh, we would generate something on the order and the total tax rate here of 14.35, we would have a uh, total revenue of uh, is this 9,190,000? Okay, and, and then we uh, have our debt service that we had. <laughs> that's what was uh, throwing me. But anyway, that's for total, and then we had to take out debt service from that number, ending up with about six million dollars for operating revenue, uh, which is what we will reflect in the budget. Again, this information is in your board book in detail. We can talk about that. Uh, basically, what this coming year will be, it will be a year of completion. The entire Postal Boulevard project built, the West Loop built, the Transit Center built, uh, complete all the right-of-way acquisitions, and we'll actually begin revenue operations of the Uptown BRT first quarter of 2020 be the last quarter, uh, the third quarter of this fiscal year. Uh, we're also working on a uh, design of the uh, replacement to the Boulevard Gateway sign rings that we had hanging over the intersection. Uh, we, uh, don't this, we will obviously be coming back to you uh, to go forward with that, uh, but we're in design right now, we're in final design. Uh, what we have had in the past simply can't work. We have widened the boulevard, and that widened the boulevard, the all, essentially the whole system of foundation poles and the rings have to change. We have to reduce uh, the amount of wind load, and basically we have some concepts that gets into a more of a tube structure rather than a solid wall of, of stainless steel uh, as the others, as the existing ones are. Um, then in uh, Memorial Park, uh, we'll uh, complete final design for the uh, land bridge. Uh, we will then bid, award, and begin construction on the land bridge. Uh, we'll, again, our staff's managing uh, that project. Uh, that's a TERS activity along with uh, uh, the Kinder Foundation and Memorial Park Conservancy. Uh, and then we will begin the design of Uptown uh, to Memorial Park uh, connector trails that would go basically from Uptown Park to Shopping Center along the west side across Buffalo Bayou underneath the freeway and into the Arboretum. So those are the big projects we're uh, working on mostly. Again, finalizing the completion of Post Oak Boulevard. The next phase would be uh, basically Memorial Park and that activity while we try to 
come up with the final design that, for your approval for the uh, sign rings, and uh, and then as we have time and, and resources, do the uh, beginning designs for the trails. Um, from finance and administration, we don't see any public new financing this coming year, but we do see a very big year with reintroduction of our holiday lighting event. We think that's going to be a big thing this year, and then we really are going to focus our efforts on going into the various buildings of various uh, major employers in the area and teach all of us how to use transit. Uh, the bottom line is, if you have a iPhone or an Android phone, uh, you'll only need that, and then you can you can go legally ride the vehicle. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, then providing public relations support uh, with the Memorial Park land bridge. And then finally, uh, I think that as we begin operations, we're going to have to have a special presence out there on the boulevard uh, as the buses are running up and down the transit lanes. Uh, people have sort of become accustomed for that very wide median. Uh, it's a great place if you don't quite get across the intersection, it's a good place to sit while when the light turns green. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to police that, we're gonna have to make certain uh, that we don't have people ex essentially blocking the box. And uh, so we're budgeting to have officers out there to help that transition. Are we um, planning on any sort of campaign that helps the drivers become more aware this is now an increased pedestrian environment where you know they kind of need to reassess their strategies for driving the boulevard. Uh, the answer to that, we know that that's something we need to work on exactly how we do that because drivers out here don't view the pedestrian as a legitimate use of their concrete. <laughs> same drivers go downtown, you're going to learn very quickly that the pedestrians own the concrete until they get across and then you can make your right hand turn. And so I, I think there's going to be a real learning. Uh, I don't know if we do that through uh, paper, email, uh, try to get newspaper articles, try to get TV articles about this. But I agree, if you have any suggestions uh, about how to do it. I would think something more direct like uh, Flashing signs, banners, rumble strips, you know, something in the, you've got great uh, signs on fences. Yeah. Like the boulevard the streets that could build, build crosswalk. But, but kind of incorporated into all that kind of stuff. And just so when you're in the area driving around, you're kind of coming aware that something's changing and new and different. So I, I, kind, I kind of like what you're saying is that basically uh, almost like marketing but you know the, the sign doesn't have to look like a normal sign it can say you know be careful pedestrians uh in sidewalk or in, yeah kind of wake everybody up mm -hmm. and i will tell you we have a, a real problem uh, if any of you drive through the area where between neiman's and, and dillard's there west Palmer to west alabama people have been crossing there for 20 years or so and they think they have a right to continue to cross there um, we are going to put some, one of our green screen fences uh, between the left-hand turn lanes there to try to dissuade people. But let me just say, I personally have observed uh, when we had a concrete median barrier there for construction and a, a six-foot-tall orange plastic fence on top of it, I have seen people cutting the fence and uh, crawling through would have been one thing, but actually what they did was they picked up their child's stroller set it on the concrete median there, then crossed through and picked it up and went across, walked through a construction zone. I don't know if we're gonna be able to deter that guy. And so I think the uh, you know jaywalking tickets, we're gonna have to have a lot. The Metro has a, a, a you know police force. We had off duty officers. I wanna make sure traffic moves, but we need to train people. Kendall, I think your point's well taken. What's the speed limit? Kenny, what kind of car you have? <laughs> it, it's less than, it really, it's 35 miles an hour, I think that speed limit is. And it's better than used to. The signals actually make people think about it. Used to, it's how fast can I go before I have to stop? 
maybe it's still that same way, but um, it, it, you know, the, the traffic signal just uh, got control of that just a little bit. Do you think some of the paving of roads can go from six, six hands down Woodway and Moore Drive? Uh, the, uh, uh, the terrace might be, uh, the uptown terrace. It just seems like a lot of money is spent on the park, which is yes. awesome, but I think they need to pave the roads to the park because right now they're not great. Uh, Memorial, Woodway, basically, West, West, West Loop yeah. to... Woodway and Memorial. Uh, West of 16. East of 16. East of 16. So uh, in the park. Yeah. But in we, the park. We've, we've park. heard that uh, from a couple of our uh, TERS board members, and what we've done in the TERS budget is to set aside uh, a sum of funds to go out there and do full panel replacement. We did that a few years ago between the West Loop and, my goodness, all the way back up to uh, Chimney Rock. And it really made a big difference. And we've done an inventory. Uh, Andrew's done the inventory. And uh, we have a program to begin to address that uh, this coming year. All right. So that the turd, the turds is hard to is, is on that. Any other questions about the budget? Or you need uh, more presentation? I'm, I'm going to go by, I'm going to give you the key points here. Right, sorry. Uh, again, I've sort of given this to you before. Ad valorem values and revenues can remain constant. Uh, budget assumes continued uh, litigation settlements. Uh, there is no, we're proposing no tax rate increase, and we are presenting to you a balanced budget for this year, which is sustainable uh, in, in the uh, next three to five years. At least that's what we've looked at. Uh, just very quickly, Kendall, uh, these numbers, uh, I think the key thing is if you kind of look, we're, we're assuming some less revenue here. Uh, we are uh, uh, realizing that that maintenance budget is pretty close, but it doesn't have things like the arches. Public safety is getting a little bit less because we're doing less 12 months of the year in terms of uh, construction management. And then these other numbers aren't uh, all that different. Uh, about seven, under $800,000 less than last year, and we are presenting a balanced budget. Um, I think that's uh, uh, the beginning cash of 6.4, ending with 6.4 uh, for this year, and, and then capital budget, uh, uh, we have about uh, just under 12 million available, and basically I think the key things here, pay, finish paying for pedestrian lighting, me median stainless steel, post up boulevard landscaping, and then down here some funds set aside to see if we can actually come up with a design that we can afford that everyone uh, appreciates. And the board has to make a decision whether we go forward and spend the money to, uh, to develop and, and install signage. Those are the key points uh, uh, there. Uh, and, and I'm through with the budget and could give a project update. But uh, I, our recommendation to you is the budget that we presented to you in the board package. Okay, any more discussion on the budget? Questions, ideas? Um, if not, let me ask for a motion to approve the resolution adopting an operating capital and debt service budget for the 1920 fiscal year. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries. So our next item is to receive updates. If I may, uh, we uh, flew uh, the drone uh, video uh, this week, actually Monday. It's so dreary and so dark that uh, we're not going to ask you to sit through it. It just wasn't that effective. Uh, but we are flying it again. The first bright and sunny day we get, uh, Metro wants to utilize it uh, for, their, uh, for their marketing program for uh, selling BRT. Uh, I have been involved with Metro in the last few days uh, trying to influence them a little bit about what the B BRT vehicle should look like and uh, having some success, we'll see how that goes over time. Uh, so uh, beginning here uh, very quickly, I'm gonna just lead us through some of the, we took some of the still photographs out of the video shot of the corridor. Uh, that you can see down north of Memorial where the project is actually coming down to grade. 
Uh, you can see that they now have girders all the way from this point, just uh, north of Memorial Drive, all the way down to Buffalo Bayou. Uh, we're beginning to get the roadway surface poured, and it is hopeful as soon as we can get this uh, covered, uh, that the uh, woodway, the, the memorial to woodway frontage road will be able to open. Uh, the, uh, they're beginning to line the entrance uh, into Post Oak Boulevard. As you drive down the West Loop, you can look out and see how quickly the bus lane actually rises. You can see the columns being constructed there. The, uh, our, we have uh, 10 of the 18 uh, platforms installed. Two of them, uh, both the one here and then this one has now been, uh, has the full glazing, has a glass installed. Uh, this one, in, in fact, uh, on the far side, the, the ramp is, has been poured and pavers come next along with the cladding. We're supposed to receive cladding. Uh, these columns will be clad uh, and that should be coming in in July. And we've got lighting, everything, uh, and working closely with Metro on all the signage and everything else uh, to be on the platform. Uh, this is a photograph of the one here uh, in this uh, cabinet uh, that is on the platform. This is an electrical cabinet and then on the other side are two different communication cabinets. Uh, one for Metro, one for us. And those are actually air conditioned. Uh, I don't think there's enough room there for anybody to enjoy it. Um, but a decision was made on most station locations, <clears throat> there will be one large thing, if you will, uh, out, in the, out, out in the grass. Uh, and by putting this on the platform, uh, this sort of takes care of at least three of those. Um, and so only two locations uh, down at Guilford will have a, not only a switch and a transformer, and we'll have one also up at Uptown Park, southbound, will have a switch and a transformer. Uh, you can see the, the one at Guilford uh, switch is there. Transformers are to be installed any day now. Um, the, uh, just a little shot that uh, I mentioned earlier, we do have roses growing at our stations, and I think that's a little bit different level of, uh, of maintenance than what Metro or people typically see at, at transit centers. Uh, based on input from this board and from uh, the uh, TERS board and from the Metro board, Metro actually adopts our station names and makes them official. The recommendation uh, by Metro and by uh, both groups was basically the major cross streets are something significant, uh, like a, a stadium, uh, etc. would be used in the name. So beginning on the north end, uh, the recommended names that we presented to Metro were the Uptown Park Station, and we actually gave people several different names. You were able to go online and actually vote, uh, and uh, uh, in some of the building managers were really very effective at trying to influence that, uh, but uh, we uh, we kept the names kind of, uh, you know, there was a couple of people I think wanted to name the stations after themselves. But, uh, so Uptown Park, next one up would be Four Oak Station, next one up San Felipe Station, then Ambassador and Guilford. Um, and then the West Timer and the West Alabama Station really presents an issue. Many people are looking for, quote unquote, the Galleria. Uh, and our recommendation was simply to go to the street name and then secondary, secondarily to uh, the Galleria uh, being uh, West Timer Galleria and West Alabama Galleria. Um, I think uh, Metro board uh, typically agreed, agreed with that, but they will make their final decision um, in July. So there's nine stations between 610 North or 610 here and basically... You know, between Uptown Park and Richmond, uh, there are nine sec that really are 18 individual platforms, uh, and uh, almost every one of them are, uh, part, they split on either side of the intersection, uh, but uh, down at West Alabama, they are side to side one another, so both the north and south bound are touch 
if you will, West Alabama, and then down in Richmond, both of the stations are, are north of Richmond, between uh, Richmond and Fairdale. Uh, looking at this construction, this is, uh, this is actually a beautiful thing to us because what uh, the, the TxDOT has done, they originally thought, they, they were talking about dates that this wouldn't be ready until like 2022. Uh, but Robert has worked very closely with them with a lot of other people as well and, and uh, how to get that moved up, get it completed by the end of the year. And the reality is they came in uh, toward, uh, this is actually ultimately would be south down uh, right of way, uh, but now we have built that. All traffic is moved over to that so they can get in here and work much more uh, effectively and get this completed uh, is our hope by the end of the year. That's their hope as well. Okay? Is there a, like a new hotel or something going up on this corner? The, uh, the, the newspaper articles uh, attribute uh, McNair uh, interest doing a hotel uh, on that six acres, along with some office and, and we go up. I always like to wait to see the crane. You know, is a good indicator indicator what's going to happen. Continue across, uh, and then just to uh, take a look at the transit center as you drive the Southwest Freeway. This is what's going to be built, uh, and, and I, I point this out so that as we look at some of the pictures, you'll understand what they are a little bit better. This area underneath is actually where the BRT buses that will come from Post Oak Boulevard will be at the ground level as well as the local buses that come in off of West Park and off of Rice. The, in, the layer in between there will be parking, and then at the third level will be the buses that are coming in from Sugar Land, from downtown, what we call the height HOV buses, uh, coming off of those busways. And so that's basically what is being built right there. Uh, here is the T-Ramp, as you can see. Uh, TxDOT, this is a project that TxDOT is constructing using funds that we've received for our federal grant. And then it, another perspective uh, coming across and then you begin to see the transit center. So ground level, uh, ground level parking, this ramp is the ramp taking uh, cars up to the second level. Uh, you can see here what the third level will be. and I. So this is the second level, and then this is uh, something above that we haven't uh, gotten here yet. Now, do you recall what the capacity is? On uh, the parking? Yeah. Parking is uh, 239 spaces at the moment. Um, concept of this isn't that you would drive your car to this place and, and park. Uh, it is you would park your car at a parking lot in Sugarland, ride the bus here, and transfer. So there's some local demand that would be served. We've had a, a lot of interest expressed to us about providing additional parking uh, for employees, uh, peak loads and things like that. Uh, it, and it, if we had the financial resources, uh, we, we'd probably do that. We've been approached uh, by one developer group who's very seriously considering about how to fund another 250 spaces. Reality is that if you build another parking space, you basically have to build a foundation. And, and by the way, um, I'm looking at this. Uh, let me go back over here to this. So the surface parking back here is where you would actually build a garage. It would, uh, it would match up at that second level, uh, but it would be a, a seven layer uh, parking garage at that point. And so after you, if you build the first level, you have to have foundations that will ultimately support uh, seven levels. And so uh, how do we get past that? Uh, if, we, if, we get a, if we get somebody participating, helping us build 250, can we find another 250? Can, how can we go forward? It requires both Metro and the Uptown Development Authority to work together. Um, and uh, we'll just have to see how that plays out. Okay. Very common. The, the 239 that you mentioned are <coughs> Those are public or is there not? They are public, yes. Um, you pay to park there? The, uh, uh, Metro, most of the time, says if you pay your bus fare, you can park at their facility. 
And so, <clears throat> but I think if anybody wanted to reserve 250 spaces, it's, it's complicated not only in getting it physically engineered and built, it's complicated uh, in how you finance it. Uh, if it's not public, you may not get the muni rate, municipal rate on the bond. Uh, but there are ways to make it very uh, workable. Uh, years ago, Heinz was very much interested in, in uh, working with us to build a parking garage, what is now, I think, Waterwall Place, the apartment complex. And uh, we, we worked out some pretty workable scenarios. scenarios on it. Uh, so just giving you a quick oversight, uh, just different perspective here. Uh, again, this is that surface parking area here. <coughs> and uh, we're making, making pretty good progress. Uh, it is the schedule of the contractor to be at a, a point in construction that Metro will be, will be able to come in and install their equipment in November of this year. So this is project should be completed by the end of the year. As you can see here, the access road actually comes back and goes underneath the uh, exit to the toll road uh, on the West Park into a new intersection right there at West Park, about 600 feet uh, east of uh, Sage Road, Sage and Rice. Yes, sir. So, John, you said that we should be done by the end of the year. When do you think the, just the roadway would be completed um, from Richmond to the transit center? That is uh, probably the, uh, the thing that we have least in our control, but that the, you know, pouring the south down, and so let's just go there. If I own property south of Richmond, uh, it's gonna be right up to the wall at the end of the year, I think. Our objective is to get it done by the uh, end of the year. So the holidays are no guarantee. It's, it's, it, it, it's not in our, it's TxDOT project, we're pushing, and uh, given uh, sensitivity to retail access, uh, if, if we can get the northbound lanes poured, then it's a lot more likely that we can get something that at least doesn't have things, you know, cordoned off the way it is right now. Given the, uh, the buses are, it sounds like they're still working on the designs and right. influencing that, when do you think the buses will actually be ready or riding the, on The first one, uh, Revenue service is, is, we're all walking around saying March of 2020. That requires text doc to get completed, which we feel like it will on the north end. Uh, we think we'll have the transit center completed. We didn't have any reason to think not. We think Post Oak Boulevard will be completed, obviously. Uh, and, and the real question is about the going under. Metro has some tentative plans that it doesn't happen. They have some way to work around it, wire around it. Um, but I, it is my belief that that will be functional. Uh, there will be days when they're hanging girders or weekends they're hanging gir girders over uh, the bus lane, uh, particularly down near West Park, when uh, bus service might have to be routed. Uh, but we're all marching to continue to try to get that completed by the end of the year and have total operations from the West Park Transit Center uh, to the Northwest Transit Center tying in to the regional bus network. The, uh, just real good, and I'll take a link here with uh, Andrew. Uh, uh, we uh, there's been so many sketches of the, uh, the proposed land bridge uh, looking downtown, and I have to be honest with you, those ske sketches suggest that the buildings are somewhat over 5,000 feet tall uh, and appear to be floating above the horizon. Uh, and so we thought we would probably uh, get one made of what it's really going to look like. And, uh, the dirt pile that you see as you drive along Memorial, that is about the height that the land bridge is going to be. Uh, there are some points that we're going to be able to build maybe off, off of the tunnel, maybe a little bit taller, but I'll tell you what you're going to be able to see. And it's that view right there because we've been out, stood on it. You can't see east, but you're going to be able to see this quite well. This, uh, again, this is uh, reflecting the current design. Uh, reflecting current cost estimate. Uh, one of the big questions is what, how do you build the tunnels? Uh, two big uh, issues are probably do you go precast or do you uh, do it uh, cast in place? Um, 
And as part of that, uh, Tulsa built a park similar to this, or at least uh, a land bridge similar to this. And uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, we had opportunity to go to Tulsa and be led through uh, the, uh, the, the entire park by George Christ, uh, Kaiser. Uh, yes. Uh, the, wow. Uh, uh, He's a big deal. The, yeah. Uh, the, uh, Rich and Nancy Kinder were along for the trip, and uh, we didn't fly commercial. <laughs> so, uh, long bike ride, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just, uh, 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 just a little look. Oh, look. Uh, it, it, it's our criti uh, critical opinion that they didn't do a really beautiful job uh, on finishing this out. Um, and, and I want to say there's, there's just been gnashing of teeth and really worrying about what does the inside of the tunnel look like. Well, as we drove through the tunnel, we had to tell the driver, slow down, we want to look and see what the inside of the tunnel looks like, which tells you don't chase being perfect because you just can't see it. Also, the issues about how can we do lighting, maybe even at night, do some colored lighting in, inside. If any of you have any experience in this, we appreciate your thoughts. So uh, uh, just another shot of that. Uh, and, and, and again, it's, it's, it's hard, it's easy to forget that the real purpose of this is to connect the north and south sides of the park uh, with a, a park crossing that's not interfered with uh, or the danger of crossing a roadway. Um, and we get excited about what the tunnel is, but in the end, it's about what's going on on top. I think it's terribly important. So this is the uh, the Tulsa Tunnel, and as you can see, you're almost by the time you're entering, you're you're coming out. We're we're a little bit longer here, but not you know not 300 feet longer, or maybe 100 feet longer than this. Uh, this is a precast version of that, um, and again, uh, everybody's worried about the, uh, the joints and, and what it looks like aesthetically, but also how it, how it weeps and anything else. Uh, again, you you have to be in an architecture class to probably de actually determine what, what you to even see this. And so that we were sort of an architectural class going up, looking at, telling drivers to slow down. Uh, but we did have a pretty outstanding tour. And, and if you know the name George Kaiser, he led the entire group and basically, uh, just like any tour guide, walked backwards the whole time. Uh, it was pretty nice having a a billionaire for a tour guide. He had, I think, had dedicated something over $200 million to this project, of which uh, is something in the order of $460 million. Uh, it was a very nice facility, but conceptually totally different than Memorial Park. It's much more of a playground than it is a naturalized park. So things are going well uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 park, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the park improvements. We hope to really have a very good idea about uh, cost, and make some major decisions uh, come September of this year. Should, should be under construction by first quarter of next year? That's a question mark. Second, second, quarter, second quarter of next year. Any other questions? Two questions. Update? Will we have a sidewalk inside the tunnel? <laughs> and has anybody thought about bats? Because it's a big deal. Uh, we have, we're cognizant of that, but we don't have a lot of control over that. We're going to spend a lot of time watching. One, the one thing I think we found out is that you can do almost anything you want to and try to make the tunnel perfect, but the reality is it, 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 they get filthy you know, very quickly. And so we're saying invest more of your money in cleaning, which may have a positive impact on your bat population getting started. Um, uh, well, it's, it's uh, it'll come up, so you might want to think about. Are you and or against that? I, 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 I'm wondering too. I'm, uh, <laughs> are you anti <laughs> uh, You know. Uh, <laughs> well, let's say I'm pro bad. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, any other questions? Would be glad to answer them. Having said that, we, we have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> At least get turn the speaker off. All right, thanks. We have adjourned. I have adjourned.